Let's bring in Mark Simone, WOR radio show host, and John Levine, politic politics reporter at the New York Post. Gentlemen, good to see you both. Uh, Mark, what the hell were they thinking? I don't think either they weren't thinking about it at all. I mean, they didn't, they didn't realize that March 31st was Easter Sunday, which means somebody should be fired because that was a pretty big misjudgment, or they don't care at all about it. I mean, I, I'm, try, I'm trying to be nice to them, but I can't see any, any winning explanation for this. Yeah, the funniest thing is today's April Fool's Day. I don't hear anybody mention it anymore because we're living in an April Fool's year, of three years of April Fool's. Squatters have more rights in your house than you do. Yes. The, as you said, Homeland Security is now a smuggling operation. And this, this uh, it's a religious holiday, Easter. Why would you have to wipe off any religious symbol off an Easter? It's a religious holiday. That's what it is. John, we even had uh, Caitlyn Jenner on, transgender. Uh, I think, do we have that sound bite of Caitlyn? She was on Fox News early. Let me roll that, her reaction to the Easter Sunday uh, brouhaha. I mean, here Joe Biden is supposed to be um, a devout Christian, a devout Catholic. And to be honest with you, what he did is really flip the middle finger at all people of religion. Even the D.C. Uh, Archbishop, um, on uh, this weekend on Face the Nation, called him a cafeteria mm. Catholic. I mean, it, it's, it's really, res it may not be as important as the overall right. economy and the border and everything, but it is raising hackles among the American people. I feel like the president was in a very tough situation because he obviously, this, this, as Peter said, this holiday happens every March 31st, and President Biden had put out statements in 2023 and 2022 on Transgender Day of Visibility, and it just happened to be but on this, Easter this year. By the way, this, this letter, his proclamation came out the day before on Saturday, so they had, they had 24 hours when they could have decided, let, right. maybe we shouldn't put out a proclamation but on if this. If you day. reschedule Transgender Day of Visibility, then the trans activists are going to get upset and say you're throwing them under the bus, and he has a very tough re-election. So 0.1 percent of the population is more important than probably he's, 60 he's, or 70 percent. I'm not saying it was the right decision, but he has a very unwieldy coalition he has to keep in line for the re-election. You've already got the Hamas Democrats upset with him over his, you know, support of Israel. And he, yes. he's probably, he was probably afraid to upset this wing of his party, said it wasn't worth it. Let's just I mean, he's, the bigger issue is he doesn't appear to know he put out the statement. Right, right, right. <laughs> and it was right. clearly happened without but his he knowledge. Has, even if he had the 100% cognitive ability, he's painted himself into this political corner where he's done so much to cater to the far left, Mark, that he, he, he right. can't get out of it. And he, he ends up spending more time with a, a minority of his party, let alone a minority of the nation, than he does uh, concerning his, his election, re-election chances. This administration is just one big Dylan Mulvaney. They're, they're, they're going <laughs> to... Learn the lesson from Bud Light. And Joe Biden couldn't care about any of this transgender. He's never mentioned this in 47 years in politics. Yeah. It's just cheap pandering. And you're right. It touched a real nerve with people. I don't think people are going to forget it. It's no. one of those incidences that happen that just stick with you throughout the campaign. And you better bet Trump is going to make hay with it with some advertising coming up. All right, quickly on the squatters. Mark mentioned the squatters issue. And so, did you know, uh, Pete Ducey had a chance to actually ask KGP about it. Um, it gets into the whole issue of property rights. Right. Does this administration care at all? I mean, what are squatter rights at all anyway? I mean, what's what's the purpose of having property rights is what this nation was built on. Right. That's why people come here, because they want property rights. I mean, th if they are putting squatter rights um, above property rights of the American people, they're taking away the American dream. Right. Well, I think KGP is correct that it is a local issue for different states and cities to work through. And, and New York is certainly not doing it correctly. And you have these horrible stories, which have been amply covered in the New York Post. We've had many, many articles on it. And it's, it's these situations where someone goes on vacation, they come home, and then there's a random person living in their house. And the locks are changed. And if you try to do anything, you get arrested. And as you rightly point out, our nation was built on property rights and a government that turns its way uh, it turns away from property rights, it will end badly. we got to wrap, but very quickly, uh, the, the thing is there are people like AOC and Bernie Sanders who want to make it a national issue, who want to make what is local national, and, and they are doing their best to have government take over even the, the horrible public housing. They want to expand that in a new way. Yeah, it's just more of their pro-criminal. They love the criminal. Shoplifting is legal now. Uh, let the criminals out of jail. And the squatter is, is which is a criminal. A squatter is yeah, a criminal. Yeah, that's true. A squatter has all the rights and you don't have any rights yeah. anymore. All right, gentlemen, good to see you both. Thank you very much.